Okay, how does the idea of a God of love square with the idea of the existence of hell? Can the character of God actually connect to the idea of hell? I think it can because biblically, not only is God a God of love, but he's a God of justice and judgment on evil. And so I think if you go around the world, even though our Western minds struggle with the idea of hell, you go around the world and people don't wrestle with it as much. You go into a, a, a village deep in the jungles of Africa or South America, and you talk to people about the idea of, the, of a divine being, they're going to say, look, there's men who came into my village and raped the children and killed the women. And if you come along and say, well, don't worry about it. You know, the guys got away and you say, well, don't worry about it. Everyone's going to end up in heaven in the end. They're going to say that God's not actually worth worshiping. And so it really takes the, the comfort and the, and the idealism of kind of Western democratic ideas and suburban safe life to put God on trial for being a God of judgment. He has to be a God of judgment or... 99% of the world says he's not even worth worshiping. And so, yes, it might be a struggle for us to square the idea at times, um, but you go around the world and it's not a struggle for them at all. There's other questions that they may have. And so when we let that issue um, uh, make us say, well, we don't believe in God, what we're really saying is the things that make us uncomfortable about God trump the things that make other people and other cultures uncomfortable about God. And that's a very dangerous place to be. I think the beauty of it is that yes, there's a God of judgment, but he's going to mete out that judgment based on a perfect, pure assessment of every individual person. Judgment just doesn't have in carte blanche across the board the same with everybody. Almost every judgment passage in the Bible evaluates a person's life. So Jesus in the Gospels teaches about the idea. He says, this city is going to get it worse than that city. Romans chapter 2, uh, Matthew 25, Revelation 21 and 22, the books are open he assesses your life and people get judgment based on what they did with their life. It's not all the same for everybody. And so the fact that uh, God is going to bring judgment on each individual because he is perfect and just actually gives us comfort. And lastly, it allows us, as Miroslav Volf talks about, to be the kind of people who actually love our enemies and absorb evil like Jesus did on the cross. Because if we need to retaliate in this life, then we're going to go and someone's going to wrong us and we're going to go and try to kill them and their family. But if we say, you know what, it's not my job, but as the book of Romans talks about, Romans chapter 12, it's God's job to do the vengeance, then we can actually absorb the evil now and return uh, that evil with love, knowing that God is going to deal with it in the end. If there's not a God who's going to deal with people in the end, then we have to, in this life, do the judgment ourselves in our own time and in our own way. And so uh, Wolf talks about the idea that the only way to absorb the evil is to theologize violence, make it God's job and not ours.